Hello. Um, there's a lot of discussion in economics about um, the, the role of the state in redistributing income and making uh, the difference between the rich and the poor in the country uh, less apparent. Uh, certainly in the UK there are a range of policies in place which attempt to redistribute income, but to some people it always seems that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. How do we actually measure the level of inequality in a country? Well, we use a technique called the Lorenz curve to show inequality, and here's how it works. Along the bottom, we will have, let's split this up into five groups of very roughly done 20, 40, 60, 80. This is percent of households. And we talk about quintile groups, groups of 20%. And we, the first quintile group is the poorest 20% of the UK. The next quintile group is the second poorest 20% of the UK, right up to the richest 20% of the UK. When I say richest, I mean by income, not by wealth. You can do it with wealth, but we're doing it with income. On the vertical axis, we also have uh, split into percentages. Let's have 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Again, it's very rough. But this is percent of income. Okay, and if you can imagine a point, a line, which let's say is a 45 degree line, where that stretches up something like that. It would be 45 degrees if these scales were the same, of course. And I want you to imagine we have the figures that, that report um, how, how much of the national income each 20% of the households have. Now, before tax, and in, before tax and benefits are included that help redistribute income, it's obviously true that the poorest 20% of households do not have 20% of the income. In fact, the poorest 20% of households might have only about 5% of the income. And we could plot a point here where 20%, the first 20% of households have only, say, 5% of the income. The next 20%, because by definition they are not as poor as these 20%, must have more than 5% of the income. Perhaps they've got another 10% of the income. And that would, take, that would mean that 40% have 5 plus 10% of the income and might take us to about there. The next 20% may have 20% of the income, and so on and so on. And the last 20% must have more than 20% of the income. What I'm plotting is the path for a Lorenz curve, which must start here because zero households have zero income. And it must finish at 100-100 here because all the households must have all the income. The point is that it doesn't hug the 45 degree line. Every 20% of households do not have 20% of the income. It bends away from the, from the 45 degree line. And this represents, this shows us what, what each quintile group has in terms of share of the national income. Well, it, it stands to reason then, the more bent this Lorenz curve is away from the 45 degree line, the more unequal is the distribution of income. And government tax and benefits seeks to push this Lorenz curve in and to make it more equal. Now that I've shown you broadly how that works, let me rub this out and show you some more ideas on this. And I'm just going to sketch one now. There's the 45 degree line. Here is the Lorenz curve for one particular country. Here is the Lorenz curve for another country. Let's call this country A and this country B. It's clear that with the Lorenz curve technique, we can compare the equality of the distribution of income in different countries. It may be that even though B has a more equal distribution than A, it may be that B is a poorer country. It doesn't mean that B is a richer country, it just means that the, the, what income there is in country B is allocated more equally than in country A. Um, economic growth in a country tends to, to, to gravitate towards the already rich. So when there is a strong economic growth in a country, we tend to see the bending outwards of the Lorenz curve, and it takes government policy to correct this 
what, what most people would consider market failure and, and push it back in a bit. The UK uses policies like the minimum income guarantee, which is a top up for pensioners who have nothing but the state pension. They use the working family tax credit, which uh, seeks to give tax credits back to families on low income, where the whole household is on a low income, not just one worker. National minimum wage tries to boost the income of the, the low skilled. Um, additional child uh, benefits, again, gives, gives back some money to, to, uh, uh, to families who are on low income. And then progressive taxation with higher tax bands for, the, for, the, for higher incomes would actually take it away from the, from the higher quintile groups. Uh, the recent uh, political scandal over the cutting of the 10p income tax rate which has left, I think, 5.2 million people worse off in the UK, um, could be argued to throw the Lorenz curve out of it. Anyway, the Lorenz curve uh, shows us how equal or unequal is. We can use it to compare the same country at different time periods. We can use it to compare different countries. But some people don't like the Lorenz curve because they say it's a bit, you know, you're just looking at lines and you're trying to make judgments from lines. Better to work with real numbers. If we want to work with real numbers, we can use technique called the Gini coefficient. The Gini, co <coughs> excuse me. the Gini coefficient <coughs> okay. right. we can use a technique called the Gini coefficient and the Gini coefficient the Gini coefficient is um, a technique which looks at the Lorenz curve and measures area A, which is the area between the 45 degree line and the Lorenz curve, as a proportion of the entire area below the 45 degree line. It's the area between 45 degree and Lorenz curve divided by entire area below the 45 degree line. Now, if this was a very, if this was a country with an extremely, extremely um, equal distribution of income, that Lorenz curve would be very, very close to the 45 degree line, and this area would be very small, and the Gini coefficient would come out to something very close to zero. So Gini coefficient, which can be read between zero and one, close to zero would mean very equal distribution of income. If, however, it was a very unequal distribution of income and the, and the Lorenz curve was really a long way from the 40 feet, 45 degree line, then that area would almost be equal to the entire area below the 45 degree line. And this Gini coefficient would calculate to being very close to one, and that would imply a very unequal distribution of income. So the Gini coefficient is quite nice because it gives us an actual number and we can literally then compare the size of, of numbers and judge the relative um, equality of different uh, time periods or different countries. Um, I think the UK's Gini coefficient is something like 0 0.33, something like that. And if the politicians wanted to reduce that, they might set themselves a target. It's easier to set targets with Gini coefficients than it is with Lorenz curve. But of course, then again, you cannot calculate a Gini coefficient without having a Lorenz curve anyway. So any, any uh, inaccuracy of the Lorenz curve itself will, will show itself in the Gini coefficient as well. Anyway, this is a way we can look at the equality of income distribution in an economy. Okay, thanks.